on everyone? It's almost a new year and that means I got one more top 10 list before we get into the new years and that is for my most underrated films of this year. This is my favorite list to make every year due to the fact that there are so many great films that go way under the radar and no one touches on and understand that even on this list I'm still going to be missing some and some that I actually wanted to check out but there was no way I could check it out. I was either out of theaters already or not on Blu-ray yet, and I do happen, if you if I miss anything that I didn't get on my list and you guys think I need to check out, please comment down below and let me know. Also, let me know what are some of my your favorites that I picked out on this and what films you guys are going to go check out now. Plus, guys, hit that like and subscribe button. Check out Sandwich on Films also down below for advanced movie screens. But without further ado, let's get into my honorable mentions of what films didn't make my top 10 list, which going down to I have Annihilation, Game Night, Tag, Leave No Trace, The Hate You Give, Beautiful Boy, Wildlife, Suspiria, If Bill Street Could Talk, and Roma. Now, I put most of those in the honorable mentions because I do think that some of them did get critical praise, or it actually had some sort of surface. I think some of the, the films that I did put into my list though are films that I think no one is even talking about, and Roma almost made the list, but the fact that Netflix is pushing it so hard, I think just deserved an honorable mention. But now we get to my number 11, and now I put number 11 here, I know we're having a top 10, but number 11 is tied between number 10, and that is blind spotting. I wanted to give a little bit of love to this film. This is one of the most creative original scripts I have ever seen on the screen in a very long time and I'm so mad that I missed it out in theaters but it is out on blu-ray and I do want you guys to go check it out don't really look up what it's about just go check it out it's a dark comedy I guess that's where you can put it but it does deal with some very thought-provoking things that I think you guys need to check out it's my number 10 which is easily the most underrated film of this year and that is insane this has Steven Soderbergh directing this film with Claire Foy starring in it and it's all filmed on an iPhone this is a horror thriller film that is insane and trying to make you feel unsane and insane it's just awesome like that and this is one of the most creative films i've seen this year not everyone loved it but i think everyone was so talking about it and then no one went to go see it and it's on blu-ray 4k go check it out it's definitely worth a try out i'm really impressed with whatever bleaker street and steven soderbergh puts out so steven soderbergh is one of the most underrated directors out there who always does creative things and i think this is one of those films that adds to it coming in at my number nine is a film that was drastically no one saw it's on blu-ray it's on digital now and that is searching starring John Cho and directed by Agnish. It's a first-time director. John Chow gives easily the best performance of his career, but the thing about searching that no one saw it because it just looked like an unfriended spin-off and it and I mean there are little easter eggs to it in there which is actually pretty cool but Searching is one of the best films of this year for a lot of reasons. It not only has a very interesting story and a twist that you don't see but it's a film that you definitely want to watch twice there's things on the computer screen that you can catch there's a whole second subplot happening to the side if you even pay attention it's just such a smart and in inventive film that i cannot wait to see what this director does next it's, it's the gone girl of 2018 Number eight is going to be The Sister Brothers. This is the one Western this year that has stuck with me. It has easily the best score of 2018, one of the best scores of 2018 at least. And it stars Joaquin Phoenix and John C. Riley. and, let me say this, Jake Gyllenhaal and Riz Ahmed. What a fantastic cast, and this film got literally no one really talking about it. And I absolutely fell in love with this film. It's a very slow-paced character study about these two brothers and their relationship and where the arcs go within it. And it's just so complicated and so different that I have to give such a shout out to John C. Riley, easily giving the most underrated performance of the year in this film for best actor. I, it is very sad that he's not getting pushed for it, but The Sister Brothers is a film that you guys should definitely search out. Coming in at number seven now is Apostle. This film is located on Netflix. And I'm dying. I wish this film would have been in theaters because I would have checked it out. It's directed by the guy who did The Raid 1 and 2. That doesn't get your interest. You've never seen the raid. Check out some fighting scenes from there. You're definitely going to want to check it out there. Hostel is about a man traveling to an island to save someone from a island inhabited by a cult. There's some weird freaky stuff going here, but the way the film's a little bit slow and it's a little bit too long, but still the way the camera moves, the way the horror happens and some of the scary moments in here are just. I love it. Apostle ends up being one of the most underrated films for me personally, and it almost actually made my top 10 list. Coming in at number 6 is Keira Knightley's best performance, and that is for Colette. Colette is one of the most underrated films this year, just for the fact that I'm, period pieces, I'm a little... I'm really iffy with them, and this film, I sat down, I enjoyed it, and the score starts, the performances start, and the world starts building around me, and I just got sucked into it to the point where I felt like I was there, and it felt like, this was a film that if you'd still in a theater near you, do check it out, because it really transports you to this time period, and I haven't had the time to watch it back at home yet, but when it does, I'm definitely going to pick it up and try it out again, because... 
Keira Knightley, again, doesn't just gives one of the best performances of this year. Uh, she probably gives it for best actress this year, like underrated wise. And the whole film in general just sucks you in and just never lets you go with the period piece, with the world, and with this main character. It is one of the strongest female-centric performances in the last couple of years, and I absolutely dug the hell out of Colette. Coming in at my number five is going to be Cold War. This is another foreign film. It's going to be, it should be coming out on Amazon soon, but I got the chance to see this in theaters, and I absolutely enjoyed Cold War to all my heart's content. This is one of the most beautiful-looking films. A lot of people are talking about Romo, but this is another one of those beautiful-looking movies. It's inventive, it's different, and it's short, but it's a about two lovers who just can't seem to work it out at the same time and it's a film that will make you fall in love but also break your heart to pieces and in the end of the day when I think about Cold War I go there and I think man this is a really special film a lot of passion put into it and if you're looking to some foreign film to check out this is definitely one of them. I think it's my number four, which we're talking about Overlord. Now, I definitely wanted some more zombie stuff in here, but when I look at this film, I'm like, this is like a Wolfenstein film put together. The opening sequence alone was a, a sequence that you had to have seen in the theaters. It was badass, and it's more of a World War II film, but when it gets to the twisted horror thematics of it, it totally works. It doesn't feel like it's being thrown out of left field, and I think this film is going to be a sleeper hit when it hits like platforms like Netflix or Hulu. Coming in at number three is a Melissa McCarthy movie. Yeah, I know. She ended up on my worst list. Now she's ending up on here and that is for can you ever forgive me a film that has really touched me and kind of moved me in a different side of a way and the more i think about the film the more i definitely liked it melissa mccarthy gives easily the best performance of her career richard e grant gives one of the best performances of his career and it's a very smart moving film that melissa mccarthy plays to her best she's funny in it she's dramatic in it and you really do feel for her character and i really hope she gets an oscar nomination out of this film now we come to my number two and number two and one kind of flip back and forth but number two is american animals a film that when i first initially Initially saw it, I really enjoyed it, but I, as I continued to think about it, it kept moving up and up and up and how much I liked this film. This film has some of the best scenes of 2018, it has some of the best performances of 2018, and it's one of the best written films of 2018. The way that the director shot this film, Bart Lighton, literally made one of the most unique storytelling devices, and I don't want to get into it, I don't want to spoil it, but this is based on a true story, it's a heist film of all manners, and it is just so unique. I'll leave it there. Seven Peters and Blake Jenner is in it, so if that kind of intrigues you even more, it should. Moving into my number one film of the year that is easily the most underrated film of all this year, that is Lee Winnell's Upgrade. Upgrade is a film that, again, I first saw it, I thought that was a badass time, but the more I thought about it, the more I watched it, the more I bought it and I checked it out more and started recommending it, Lane Winnell should definitely direct a Mortal Kombat film after this, especially since his friend James Wan is producing the new Mortal Kombat reboot. I loved what Lane Winnell does this. It kind of goes back to a B-rated sci-fi film, but it, it, it hits it, and it knows what it's going to be. It, it tackles sci-fi elements. It has some of the best action I've seen in the last couple of years within a film, probably since The Raid. The camera catches it all on screen. It's always moving around in a very stylish, thick way, and it has a brilliant performance from a man who looks like Tom Hardy. Isn't it funny how we got this film in Venom the same year? Check out Upgrade. It's on Blu-ray. It's on digital. A lot of these films I've already mentioned are on digital or should be be coming out on digital soon but that is my most underrated films of 2018 guys what films did i miss this year that i definitely should have checked out let me know down below let me know your list down below tell me what is your guys's favorite film of this year and go check out all the other lists that i did make out hit that like and subscribe if you guys are new here and plus hit up sandwich on films again down below and guys i'll see you guys soon until next time stay classy